Spice and Wolf is often regarded as one of the most interesting romance anime tackling medieval economics. Many have praised the series for its unique and witty banter between the wolf goddess Hollow and the traveling merchant Lawrence. As they embark on their journey, they face many challenges ranging from monetary schemes to dealing with the loneliness that comes from traveling. While many are quick to point out the great chemistry between the two leads, I've rarely seen anyone explain how Spice Move makes economics interesting in the context of the show. Today I've taken the liberty to examine how the series integrates economics and the way it's interwoven into the narrative. So sit back and let's delve into the economics of Spice and Wolf. Lawrence is immediately established in the series to be a pragmatic merchant whose one goal is to earn a profit. But while this may make him seem like a money-hungry trader, it's quickly shown that he only wants money so that he can attain his dream of one day settling down and owning a shop. Being a traveling merchant, Lawrence doesn't get many chances to talk with people. His travels often take days and sometimes even weeks without any human contact. He gets so lonely that he even tries talking to his horse on one occasion. By presenting Lawrence's dreams and aspirations early on in the series, it not only humanizes him but shows us that unlike other merchants in the story, he's more honest and wants to build connections rather than monetary gain. Although on one fateful day, he meets a person that would forever change his daily life. His first encounter with Polo comes at night with a blue hue surrounding the grassy plains. Polo convinces Lawrence to take her with him on his travels in order to reach her homeland, and so the two begin their journey together. The first trade happens in episode 3, where Lawrence must sell his furs to another merchant. As negotiations conclude, Lawrence is able to sell for a decent price for his goods. However, it's thanks to Hollow's cunningness that Lawrence is able to sell the furs at almost double the original price. Now, what we have to understand here is that for a trade deal to occur, you have to convince that the product you're selling is worth the buyer's investment, and Hollow does this by employing a discreet tactic. She manipulated the merchant by tricking him into thinking that the furs were of a higher quality due to its fruity scent. This is of course not true, but by rewatching the scenes beforehand, you can clearly see what's Hollow's intent from the very beginning. It's hinted from both visual and audio cues. Prior to the trade, Hollow had purchased apples to satisfy her appetite, which is very much in character for her. However, from the way the camera is positioned, it gives us a clear view of Lawrence's cart where we can see that it's divided into very distinct sections with an assertive amount of apples placed on top of the furs. It's also no coincidence that Holo states she wanted to eat apples because they smell delicious, a small hint that's easy to miss if you aren't paying careful attention. While this trade may be simple and not hinge on any deep understanding of economic principles, it shows us that even with Lawrence's vast knowledge of trade, Holo's years of experience comes a long way in negotiations and will further prove to be pivotal in future deals. However, their next encounter doesn't come long after. As Lawrence arrives in a new city, he meets a mysterious fellow named Zarin who tells him a rumor about the new coins being reissued into the city. Zarin says that the new silver coins will have a higher purity in them than the previous ones. This means that if one were to buy a large amount of the old stocks and exchange them for the new ones, you could make an easy profit without having to do much due to the currency appreciation. The purity of coins was particularly important during the medieval eras because during the 1500s, it was important to distinguish the different types of currencies. As new cities rose, different types of currencies were formed. This led to the possibility of being scammed, since if you weren't well versed in the various types, many would take advantage. Zarin proposes a deal that, in exchange for the information, he would receive a small amount of money regardless if Lawrence made a profit or not. This of course seems too fishy for Lawrence and so proceeds to investigate the information from around the city. Luckily for Lawrence, it's thanks to Hollow's sensitive ears and ability to hear acute sounds that she's able to tell the difference between the new silver coins having a more muffled tone. Our characters find out the information they were given was false as the new coins being distributed are actually less pure. Now, this scheme may look fairly simple from the outside as our leads were just told a lie, it's actually far more intricate than that. Hollow and Lawrence dig deeper and find out that Zarin was one of many people hired by a company called Medio Trading to spread the false rumors surrounding the new coins. Medio Trading is a company that specializes in currency exchange, so by spreading misinformation around the town, many people would be incentivized to buy the old coins and trade them in for an easy profit. However, when the new coins are found to be less pure, its value would depreciate over time garnering a loss for the townsfolk, while Medio Trading would benefit hugely. This arc not only showcases the brilliant plan the company has, but teaches us an important lesson when it comes to human nature. Even though civilized society may be structured and complex, when faced with the prospect of greed, human nature almost always boils down to the selfish desires of oneself. It's shown through the company's plan as it hinges on the deception of other people. However, not everything has to be so grim. In a show filled with economic principles, cunning schemes, and untrustworthy people, there's something that's forever consistent, the bond between Holo and Lawrence. 
It's the driving force within the story, and as the two flee in order to escape the city, Hola offers herself up as a distraction so that Lawrence is able to get away and uncover the truth. She puts her full trust in Lawrence, knowing that if she's captured, he'll find a way to save her. Hola feels indebted to Lawrence because in her mind, he had already saved her the day she met him. In the short amount of time they spent together, Lawrence had unknowingly given her a life full of surprises as a merchant, traveling to different towns, meeting various people, and conducting unique trade deals. But most importantly, he had saved Hola from being alone. This is particularly important because it brings about one of the show's underlying themes. Solitude is a disease equivalent to death, Hola whispers to Lawrence before she leaves. Having lived hundreds of years, Holo's lost friends very close to her, and even the people who once worshipped the goddess no longer keep that tradition. She fears wandering through the cold, lonesome wasteland by herself that she'd rather be put in a dangerous situation than to be alone once again. Lawrence, bearing witness to the most vulnerable Holo's ever been, comforts her and promises to stay by her side. This is what makes Spice and Wolf so compelling. It presents the undying trust of your partner through the toughest obstacles, but it's never the focal point of the show. It's small moments like these that continue to bring out the charm of the series, and as we go on, we'll discover just how far their bonds can be pushed. As we reach the finale of the arc, Lawrence is put into a dire situation. He's blackmailed by an old acquaintance to give up Holo in exchange for wealth and a high position within the company, or else he'll be executed. While it's obvious to us that he would never betray Holo, we have to remember what his ultimate goal is, to eventually start his own shop. Giving up Holo would have been the easy way out, however, he still chooses to protect her despite his own ambitions. This is an important character moment for Lawrence because for the first time in his life, he's chosen a personal bond over his own beliefs, something the old Lawrence would have never done. It's through this arc where we come to learn just how important Holo is for Lawrence and how much they trust each other as partners. The next few episodes aren't too eventful by themselves as it serves a more character-centric focus. It places a heavy importance on the dynamics between the inexperienced Lawrence and the flirtatious nature of Holo. Although we do get to see a small but interesting trade take place. When shopping for new clothing, both Holo and Lawrence applied a bargaining tactic that was fitting to their personalities. Holo decreased the price by utilizing her charming looks and elegant persona that no man could resist. Lawrence, on the other hand, used a much more subtle method that could have easily been overlooked. Lawrence had given Holo a robe of high quality in which the shop owner could easily tell, and by having her wear this, the owner would want to set a good impression as to entice her back for future purchases. Though by giving a discount, the shop owner played into Lawrence's hand. It's nuances like these that make Spice and Wolf such an intriguing series. Holo's method was direct and instinctual, while Lawrence's was more thought out and complex, and it's reflected through their personalities. Following their journey, Lawrence finds out that he was tricked and incurred a huge debt that he had to pay within two days, otherwise he would have to declare bankruptcy. This sudden change came from him not knowing that the arms market had crashed, leaving his products essentially worthless. The situation goes from bad to worse as he tries to borrow money from other merchants to no success. Tensions rise and even through his lowest days, Lawrence's only reassurance is that he has Holo's unconditional support. He eventually derives a plan to smuggle gold into a neighboring city overseen by the church. This was especially dangerous during the medieval era because religions placed a much higher value on gold due to the fact it was seen as a divine commodity. It was presumed that the higher amount of gold a church held led to a better economic growth. This put smuggling gold as punishable by death, though as we come to expect, with the help of Holo, no hurdle is too big. Capping off the first season of Spice and Wolf, it's evident that the chemistry and witty dialogue between Holo and Lawrence is incredible. But many don't realize just how clever and fun economics is used within the narrative, and how it's interlaced with its romantic drama, making it that much more enticing. Heading into season 2, these aspects are even more exemplified in what's arguably the best arc of the series, the sale of fool's gold. Continuing their adventure, our characters encounter a young cheeky merchant named Amarty who gets infatuated with Holo and plans to buy her hand in marriage. Meanwhile, Lawrence discovers from an old legend that Holo's homeland had been destroyed but is too afraid to tell her. She finds out that Lawrence had been withholding this information and begins to question whether or not their bond was even genuine, or that he had only helped her out of pity and was enjoying how oblivious she was to reality. She leaves Lawrence for Amarty, and for the first time in the series, the future has never been more uncertain, not just for Lawrence, but for the viewer as well. Throughout the series, we've seen that no matter the obstacle they face, there's always ever been one constant, the trust between one another. Yet, when that trust is broken, we're left in disarray, uncertain of the future. It goes to show just how important their connection was, because as their relationship becomes ever more turbulent, so does the narrative. 
Nevertheless, even through all the romantic drama this arc presents, Spice and Wolf still manages to intertwine economics in creative ways. Lawrence challenges Amarty to a duel by banking on the market price of pyrite during the upcoming festival. He offers to sell 500 silver worth of pyrite in exchange for an advance payment from Amarty. The stakes come from the market value of pyrite. If the price drops, Amarty would have suffered a significant loss, since he would have essentially bought a pile of useless rocks unable to resell them for anything. If the price rose, Amarty would have more than enough silver to exchange in order to fulfill the contract binding holo. Lawrence's plan is to crash the market before Amarty could sell its pyrite for a high value. Keep in mind that while all this is occurring, an economic bubble is forming in which the value of pyrite is rising exponentially until it reaches a critical point, during which Lawrence plans on crushing the market. He does this by using what he learned back in the first season, spreading false rumors. He mentions to the townsfolk that the price of wheat will steadily begin to rise. This essentially causes the townspeople to sell off their pyrite much earlier than expected. However, Lawrence also plans to sell a massive amount of pyrite at the same time, in hopes of plummeting the band down to zero, causing the market to crash. Despite this ingenious move and even with all that effort, the amount Lawrence musters up is nowhere near enough. The situation is dire and while on the brink of giving up, Holo once again comes in to save the day. Everything we've come to know was false. Holo was on Lawrence's side the whole time and even devised the plan for her to go to Amarty. By making it seem that she had turned her back to Lawrence, it made Amarty open up revealing his plan. Holo was never going to betray Lawrence as she holds her bond with him in a much higher regard, more than mere words could ever say. It makes the reveal that much more impactful, almost as if to say, how dare you misjudge the wise wolf. I think this arc best represents what Spice and Wolf excels at that no other series has come close in doing, the merge between economics and romantic drama. That in the right lens, it shows just how engaging and interesting it can be, and that's something to truly appreciate. As we come to a close, Lawrence strikes a deal that could finally grant his dream, but he soon realizes that if his dream does come true, his journey with Holo also ends. Lawrence starts to ponder whether or not his dream still lies within owning a store, or that it's moved on to something he truly treasures, Holo. He comes to this realization and ultimately confesses his growing love for her. All this time during the struggles of being a traveling merchant, Holo was the only person by his side who trusted him till the end. It's this unbreakable bond that makes Spartan Wolf such a charming show. There's always been this recurring motif about traveling through your journeys and how over time it brings about feelings of loneliness. In the beginning, Lawrence put his time into working towards his dream, while Holo put hers towards returning to her homeland. While it's important to follow your ambitions, the series seems to suggest that it's not what you'd spend your time on that's important, it's who you spend it with. That through all the challenges you face, you'll always have someone with you. To me, that is an exceptionally heartwarming and profound message, an aspect the show never fails to capture. Spice and Wolf is often referred to as economics, the anime, but to a person who understands the intricacies of the show, this may seem like a shallow compliment. The use of economics may seem a bit dry and mundane, but in truth, I don't think people truly appreciate how intrinsically connected it is with its narrative. It's not only clever and fun with how it's implemented, but the way romantic drama is directly woven into its other aspects makes for a captivating watch, and hopefully now people can understand why that is. 